लास्ट टू और थ्री नगेट्स फॉर प्रिटी हैवी एंड लॉन्ग सो टूडेज नगेट इज स्मॉल बट रियली पॉवरफुल द नेक्स्ट इवेंट इज द रिजल्ट सीजन विच स्टार्ट इन टू वीक्स फ्रॉम नाउ आई शेयर एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ वन ऑफ द वेज आई एम एनालाइजिंग स्टॉक्स राइट नाउ आई वन वेलकम टू द अपडेट ऑफ ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ सेप्टेंबर एंड यू आर वंडरिंग बाय द थमनेल टूडे वॉज टॉकिंग अबाउट निफ्टी एक्सपायरी एंड नॉट बैंक निफ्टी एक्सपायरी लास्ट हाफ एन आवर ऑफ द एक्सपायरी निफ्टी शॉट अप बैंक निफ्टी डिडेंट रिलायंस वेंट अप टी सी एस वेंट अप एयरटेल वेंट अप इन्फोसिस वेंट अप एच यू एल वेंट अप एल एंड टी वेंट अप एच डी एफ सी डिन डू एनी थिंग आई सी आई सी आई वेंट डाउन एक्चुअली एस बी आई डिन डू एनी थिंग दिस इज वॉट यू वुड टिपिकली एक्सपेक्ट ऑन निफ्टी एक्सपायरी नॉट ऑन बैंक निफ्टी एक्सपायरी बिकॉज ऑफ द लेट सर्ज मोर स्टॉक्स इन ग्रीन हावर एंटायर डे निफ्टी वॉज एक्चुअली नॉट लुकिंग दैट गुड टूडे एक्सिस बैंक वॉज रॉकिंग बैंक निफ्टी फॉर अ चेंज इट डजेंट डू दैट ऑफन टू पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट अप एच डी एफ सी अप येट अगेन बजाज फाइनेंस वॉज अप दट टू इन बजाज फिंसर वेज वेल आई सी आई सी आई पॉइंट फोर परसेंट वॉट वॉज सेलकिंग परैप्स वॉज द आई टी पैक एंड सेलेक्ट कंजम्पन स्टॉक्स थ्री ऑफ द टॉप फाइव सेक्टर्स वर इन ग्रीन वॉट वॉज डाउन द कंजम्पन पैक इंक्लूडिंग बिवरेजेस सॉफ्टवेयर वॉज डाउन बैंकिंग सर्विसेज वॉज अप सो वॉज इलेक्ट्रिकल यूटिलिटीज एंड आई पीज बैंकिंग इज बैक एट द टॉप फॉलोड बाय द पावर पैक ऑयल एंड गैस एज वेल इज मूविंग अपवर्ड्स टूडे इन द बैंकिंग पैक एस बी आई वॉज डाउन एंड सो वॉज कोटक महिंद्रा ऑल्सो आई आर एफ सी एज यूजल वॉज डाउन वन परसेंट बट नो मेजर कट द वॉल्यूम्स ऑल्सो और ऑन द लो साइड ओनली इन द पावर पैक एन टी पी सी एज वेल एज पावर ग्रेड हैड स्ट्रॉन्ग परफॉर्मेंसेज एंड दे हैव बीन गोइंग अप फॉर अ वाइल नाउ वॉल्यूम्स हेयर वर लो ओनली एक्सेप्ट फॉर पावर ग्रेड This may be because of the news from the energy exchanges. Also, I want to highlight the performance of HDFC and ICICI Bank today. They went up and then consolidated. This is not what you would expect in terms of volatility on Bank Nifty expiry. Look at ICICI's volume minus fifty percent. Now, one observation I have shared in the past also on Bank Nifty expiry, Nifty stocks are more volatile. Tomorrow is Nifty monthly expiry. and i would expect bank stocks to be more volatile tomorrow the non banks will be performing like hdfc and icici of today today nifty's trading range was 153 points or 0.6% reasonably choppy but most of the 0.6% came in this rally nifty cro nifty crossed 26000 at this point and closed above 26000 for the first time this was literally in the last moments of the day today For the indices, there was no major hiccup in terms of a sharp up or up down move. Let's check Bank Nifty up and continuously up, no hiccups whatsoever. One non-banking stock which was really volatile today was Airtel, all over the place completely, trading range of one point one eight percent or twenty one points. But within that, it was really going up and down. For a change, no new highs for Airtel today. PSU banks were mostly down for the day. SBI, PNB, Bank of Baroda, even Kotak Mahindra and Indusind were down only. IT stocks were a mixed bag. TCS slightly up, Infosys down, HCL up, Wipro down, Zomato down, LTI down. In general, the IT stocks are heading south only. BL consolidated, Solar Industries up, Bharat Dynamics down, GRSE down, Data Patterns down. Slight uptick in Mazgaon Dock and Cochin Shipyard. in metals hindalco made another high very early in the day most of the metal stocks actually were stationary vedanta has announced another dividend to be approved by the board so that was up consumption pack continued with the correction or profit booking itc was slightly up investment banking only nippon amc was up bsc down nearly 3.5% bsc has run up too much i think it is due for some cool down now nifty and bank nifty percentages are running in tandem these days 0.3% up IT was down 0.7 percent. Energy was the reverse, up 0.8 percent. Next 50 and auto also corrected. FI sold 1000 crores. DI is bought 1800 crores. And tomorrow will be an interesting day from FI and DI perspective. I expect the FNO volumes to be very high tomorrow. The day looks all green from here. Only SBI and Infosys were down. HDFC has now been up for six consecutive days. Gold comfortable above seventy five thousand, silver comfortable above ninety two thousand. GDRs all looking green. Bitcoin comfortable above sixty three thousand. Brent, however, corrected two point seven three percent back to seventy three. Yesterday I talked about the stake sale of the promoters of Ismail Trip. The stock actually fell lot more. It hit a lower circuit of twenty percent in that day. 
closed at 34.7 down 15 percent i was expecting the stock to crack however i didn't say that because i didn't want to scare the investors of ease my trip promoter selling 8.5 percent is a big deal us markets have opened mixed bag nvidia is up today berkshire has been down for four days now today 20 stocks down 30 up the hero's power grid was at the top yet again Axis bank hdfc bank ntpc and reliance followed by the bajaj twins icici what was down lti mindtree tata motors sbi titan tech mahindra that too on high volumes next 50 37 stocks down 13 only were up vedanta was the best performer followed by icic lombard general insurance gale abb siemens and zydus so heavy machinery continues to do well what was down zomato marico avenue supermarts pnb and dabur while the power pack was held together by ntpc and power grid there was no strong hand in the oil pack today. Oil India cracked 2.3%. Reliance the heavyweight, it was a 0.3% only. As a result, the sector was not in the red. MRPL down another 2%. No buyers at all. Each and every stock had volume less than usual. Consumption pack was in red. ITC was up. As a result, food and tobacco did not crack. However, the consumption pack was down 0.8%. The volumes here also were low. Dabur cracked with high volumes, however, 4x the normal volumes. Because of large stocks shooting towards end, greed increased to 51%. Aerospace and defense down. Now three stocks are in the red, including BDL. Automobiles down, though Maruti Suzuki and MM were up. That's because Tata Motors corrected 1.5%. Beverages, everything down. Alcohol stocks also corrected today. Minor profit booking in Asian Paints and Pidilite. Remaining stocks were up. Not much interest in the construction sector. Cement stocks also the top two were up. Surprisingly, Trent is not showing much of an interest ahead of the inclusion on Monday in the indices. Paisa Bazaar cracked 6% today. Kefin also 1.2% down. Astral Pipes was up today, but the remaining home building sector was down. Hotels down. Insurance top four players corrected. As a result, the sector was down. Investment banking down. Metals, JSW steel down, but the remaining stocks were up. Pharma up, only DRL is non-green. Real estate up, Godrej properties up most 4%. Software, the real cuts are in the stocks after the top 4. Specialty retailers corrected, so did Titan and Page Industries. Both Vodafone and Industower corrected, Bharti Airtel up a little among huge volatility. Overall for the day, only 13 sectors were up. So what looks like an okay day was actually not so okay on such a day i did some shopping i added more to bl i hope my theory plays out on monday now i also bought canada bank which i mentioned yesterday i bought silver it is on a bull run right now and i have been very vocal about it but i had not myself bought a lot of it so i added some reasonable quantity today i needed money so i had to sell irfc didn't sell the whole inventory but whatever i sold was at loss only we are two weeks away from the earning season for Q2 and this time the earning season will be very volatile that is because the government spending started towards the end of Q2. A lot of capex from the government side has been on hold for Q1 and Q2 and that may reflect in the Q2 as well as H1 numbers for many stocks directly and indirectly also because the suppliers to those companies will get impacted. So analysis of stocks as well as sectors is especially important at the end of this quarter. Now one question that comes to our mind all the time when we are trying to invest in a sector. Suppose you want to invest into auto. So there are several stocks available. First there is two-wheeler, then there is four-wheeler. Then there is Bajaj and then there is TVS and there is Hero. In four-wheelers there is Maruti, Tata Motors, Mahindra and Mahindra. What do we buy? Many times people end up putting some money in all the stocks in that particular sector or category of stocks. This may not be best decision because one of the stocks is always the best and one of them is the relative worst though it may also make money for you. So I am right now trying to demystify this because I typically try and invest as well as cover the results of key stocks and sectors around the quarterly results. So I created a very small program in Python. I am not going to bore you with coding. But this is just 10 lines of code where I analyze the top 6 IT stocks from a different perspective. Now this data is published by nearly every financial portal, Yahoo Finance, Screener, Money Control and there are lot lot many. And yes, we can go to all of them and analyze stocks. 
but look at the number of tabs and look at the number of data points and everyone has their own style of analysis not everyone needs all the parameters that is why that is why i am trying to develop a program that can take care of the inputs that i need let me now show you the output don't use this output for a financial decision this is only for educational purpose and right now it is at poc stage only these are the it stocks the top six now a high or low eps or revenue per share does not indicate a strong stock at all revenue per share what it means is revenue divided by total share outstanding so a share has some earnings which is eps and a share has some revenue for example tcs has to earn a revenue per share of 671 rupees to create an eps of 129 rupees theoretically if this revenue doubles this eps should double now if we check the percentage of it for tcs 20 percent of the revenue is its eps infosys and hcl it is an astounding number which i am still trying to analyze one reason could be that that quarter was extraordinary so i did check for HCL, the EPS for 2024 was 57.99, which is approximately the same number. And there is no different trend, of course, for HCL. For Wipro, this is 12.59%, LTI Mindtree 12.74%, Persistent 11%. So if this is not an aberration or some formula error at my end, the shareholders of Infosys and HCL enjoy a lot higher EPS compared to the revenue earned by those shares. And if we leave out the Infosys and HCLT for a minute, for TCS 20%, Wipro LTI persistent around 11-12%. So if TCS increases the revenue by 50%, Wipro LTI Mindtree and persistent will have to increase the revenue by 100% to grow their EPS by similar numbers. Let me know if you agree with this analysis. Similarly, we have numbers for return on equity, return on assets. These are standard numbers which CFOs of most companies have mastered and I've demonstrated in my previous videos around the results of IT companies, how CFOs are using some of the tax numbers and other metrics, including dividend payouts, extraordinary ones, 100% dividends to create numbers that will look pretty for the retail investors. Hope this nugget added some value on how stocks can be analyzed from a totally different angle. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.